Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. It's officially winning time in the NFL. In today's wild card matchup, Victor is the only option for these two teams. So now let's go to Landover, Maryland, where Jim and Phil have the call. There's plenty of electricity in the air here today as we welcome you to a wild card matchup here on EA Sports. Hello, friends. Jim Nance and Phil Sims. Welcome to Wild Card Weekend. The playoffs are upon us, partner, all season long, building up to this week. Man, you know, you just think back to these players. We talk to them, Jim, and the coaches, to think back to training camp, and you have all those wonderful thoughts. The season's going to fall our way. We're going to get it done. Well, it happened. So here you are in this game today, this wild card game, and you play again next week. That's the big question. The Buccaneers are ready to run back this kick. The Redskins ready to get this action started. What's up, guys? This is Sin, and I'm back here with another Madden NFL 15 Buccaneers franchise. And today is the wild card game against the 8 and 8 Washington Redskins. We are 12 and 4, but we did not win the division. The New Orleans Saints did, and they have a wild card game at home as well. The two um, teams I got a first round by were the San Francisco 49ers and the Detroit Lions and uh, we will take on the winner of I think we are a fifth seed yeah we're a fifth seed we got the top wild card spot so we're facing the four seed Redskins and uh, if we win we could have and the Seattle Seahawks are the sixth seed as well if you saw the intro if the Seahawks win we'll face the Lions and if the Saints win we will take on the 49ers. So, this is a little bit of a, you know, up in the air matchup. We don't know who we're going to face next if we win. Which, the last time we did face the Redskins, we did not beat them. We lost by a field goal, and we're looking for some redemption. RG3 is a pretty cheesy quarterback in this game, but in real life, he kind of sucks. So, we are still starting Mike Glennon, who I still believe to this day in real life is a better quarterback than Josh McCown. Because Josh McCown is an idiot. And I know it's our offensive line that is kind of the problem, but honestly, <laughs> it wouldn't. It doesn't sound that bad right now if we drafted Mariota because he doesn't turn the ball over, and you know we need, we just need an offensive line that just can protect our quarterback. I mean, after the after we draft Mariota, obviously we could draft you know a lot of offensive linemen that have been you know really good. Uh, especially ones that win Outland trophies and shit like that. So we are looking for a good draft class this year. Uh, we are the worst team in NFC by record. Uh, not overall, I don't think. I think the, the uh, Raiders and the uh, – not the Jets anymore because they, they win somehow these days. And uh, the Titans, I think, are still there too. So And I think the Jaguars. But I could be wrong. I think both the Jaguars and the Titans are the same record. I'm not sure. But, anyway, we're taking on the Redskins here. RG3 is a cheesy quarterback in this game. He knows how to run. He knows how to throw for some reason. And he gets a touchdown pass right there to Pierre Garçon. And the Redskins are up 7-0 early here at FedEx Field in Washington, D.C. D.C. So, second and eight here for the Buccaneers. Here's Mike Glennon trying to do a play action. And he's dropping back, looking. He has time to throw over to the left side. It's Mike Evans, who I think is, you know, he's made his case for uh, Rookie of the Year. But lately, it's kind of been Odell's Beckham's kind of kind of taken over the landscape of rookie receivers. Even though Mike Evans has been spectacular this year. Uh, lately, I mean, that last game against the Carolina Panthers, he kind of didn't really get the ball a whole lot. He got a touchdown, but... I mean, he only got two catches for 13 yards, which doesn't really say a whole lot. So we got to get more production out of Mike Evans if we want him to contend for Rookie of the Year. But, I mean, he's still a pretty dominant receiver. I think there's going to be like four or five rookie receivers that are going to have 1,000 yards plus. And that's a rarity. Like, this might be the best. Like, I think ESPN had an article. Yeah, I watch ES I read an ESPN article. I hate ESPN, but when I see him online, I kind of just... You know, I don't like watching him on TV because it's like the same shit over and over again. But when you go online, it's not as bad. So, hey, I still think that ESPN is right about having this. This might be 
the best rookie class of receivers of all time. I mean, yeah, you sure have great receivers like Jerry Rice, Chris Carter, um, you know, all those great receivers. But they were they were kind of like in a class of their own. I think there's not many receivers that came out of their classes that were like spectacular, like these guys are, like Odell Beckham, like Calvin Benjamin, like Mike Evans, like Sammy Watkins. You know, all those guys are projected to get over a thousand yards, and we still have what three games left in the season? Three, two or three games left in the season? Yeah, two. But uh. This is probably the best class we've, we're going to see in a long time. Uh, as you see, Red, the Redskins uh, punch another one in to make it 14-7. to As we're going to get the ball back, give it off to the Muscle Hamster, who has had a really sluggish year in real life. Uh, but in this game, he's contending for the best running back in the NFL. So, obviously, I'm doing something right. I mean, I have ran a lot of the same plays that have worked over and over and over again. But at the same time, you know... It is what it is. Uh, not going to really complain about, you know, the Muscle Hampshire's production, especially since the offensive line isn't really there. And, yes, Doug Martin is to somewhat blame for this. But, I mean, when you don't have an offensive line, your team kind of sucks. It doesn't matter if you have a good quarterback. It doesn't matter if you have a good uh, good set of receivers. It doesn't matter if you have a good running back. If you don't have the offensive line to protect your, your players behind you, I mean, you're not really going to succeed in the NFL. So you see Shepard taking that deep down the field, down to about the 29-yard line with just 26 seconds left in the first half. You see Mike Lennon's kind of having a sluggish first half. All of his completions have gone for big yardage, but it doesn't really help when you're only, you know, you're down by seven, seven, and you've only completed just over 50% of your passes. So we're throwing it deep right here, and it's Mike Evans in double coverage. Go up and get it, big fella. Get another touchdown. And it's now 14 to 14, going to the start of the third quarter here in the playoffs. This is quite an intense game here, ladies and gentlemen. And third and five here for the Washington Redskins. RG3 with two running backs in the backfield. He's dropping back, looking for somebody open, looking. He's taking off running, and he's getting himself a first down and a little bit more down to about midfield. He picks up about 18 yards on that play, and we could not stop him. I hate it when he does that. And, you know, we just got to learn how to make stops. That's all. Here's RG3 again, looking to the left side, and it's wide open, and I think that's a tight end. But look at RG3's completion percentage, 10 of 12 for 123. And, yes, these are Arios' sliders that I'm playing on. And even then, it's pretty hard to stop the quarterback. So I really can't do anything at this point. But so you see that one is deflected by Leonard Johnson. Good good way to stick your hand in there, big guy. And we're going to have to end up having them settle for a field goal right here with just 3.53 here left in the third quarter. The kick is up, and it's good from Malone. It is now 17-14 Washington. We're play we've been playing from behind this whole game. But like, I s like they always say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So we have Glennon trying to get his players in motion. It's over to the left side, and it's caught. And it's a, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was a too difficult catch. I thought it could have been overthrown for a second, but Vincent Jackson does come down with it and gets the first down. Third down in inches here. Single back formation, handoff to the muscle hamster. And he's barely getting enough for that first down. Six carries for 27 yards. Not the greatest day for Doug Martin, but we, we're going to try and get him the ball more. We're going to try and run the ball here a little bit more in the second half. We've been all past so far. As you see right here, we get another completion off to the prior or fullback, and he gets a first down once again. Glennon has been doing really well in the second half. He's now 10 of 17. He has completed uh, quite a few of his passes lately. So Glennon looking. Oh, and he gets the completion here to, I think that is Vincent Jackson. That's Bobby Rainey, never mind. But it gets another completion. We, he's been doing pretty good in the second half. So Glennon throwing it deep again. And this one is going to be batted away. And it's now fourth down. Glennon now 13 of 21 for 218. But we're going to go for it on fourth down because we are not quite. In, we're kind of in that iffy range where we don't want to kick a field goal, but we don't want to punt it either. But you see we get a completion right here to none other than Robert Heron. And he gets that first down to keep the drive alive, keep this team alive in the playoffs. I know we're in the third quarter, but every possession counts. So off to Bobby Rainey. Look at him power his way through for a first down. Two carries for 15 yards for Bobby Rainey on this game so far. But we're going to try and keep going here with another pass right here. And other near, Underneath it is Shepard, and he gets pushed out of bounds after getting that first down. First and goal here for the Bucks. Glennon looking underneath. It is Doug Martin, and he is pushing his way through. 
Touchdown, Tampa Bay. We finally have a lead in this game. It is now 21 to 17, but can we hold this lead with just 5.55 to go? Now 5.21 to go, third and 22 for the Washington Redskins. Now this was just a total lapse in coverage. Deshaun Jackson deep downfield, wide open. Alteron Werner gets burned like toast. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. And now it's 24 to 21. And now we have our backs up against the wall. Once again with five minutes to go in the game. Still plenty of time, but every possession counts. So here comes Glennon. Looking underneath again, it is Mike Evans. Gets that first down. Glennon now 17 of 26 for 252. Doing pretty good here in the second half. Only has a couple of incompletions. And we're just finding these short underneath routes that have been doing us wonders. So off to Doug Martin, and he gets the first down. Pick of about six. Ten carries, 48 yards for the muscle hamster. Now second and ten here for Tampa Bay. Shotgun formation. Once again, here's Glennon. Looking over the middle, it is Doug Martin again. Oh, what? Oh, my God. He just juked him out of his shoes for that first down. Now, Glenn is now 20 of 30. Still doing really well here in the second half. Third down in inches here for the Bucks. Two minutes left. Two-minute warning drill. Here we go. And we are stopped right there in our tracks as that was a breakup right there. And uh, we're going to have to tie the game up with a field goal. Just under two minutes to go. Now we're going to have to play with our back up, backs up against the wall once again. Here on a third and four for RG3 and the Skins. Here is... Uh, pistol formation and they're taking a little bit of the time with their snap they're going to try and go underneath and the defense comes up and swarms alfred morris right in his tracks we're going to call a timeout to preserve time and make sure we have one left for when we try and get in field goal range if we get in field goal range so quick strike right there to vincent jackson that was quick that was as soon as the ball was snapped that was going right to vincent jackson i already knew that from the outset because vincent jackson could go up there and get it so we're going to hand it off to the muscle hamster and he is going to get right in around that middle of the field where we want him to be. So now we're going to be set up with two seconds to go with Connor Barth for the win. Ah, yes. It just squeaks by the uprights and the crossbar. And Tampa Bay is moving on to the divisional round. Will we face San Francisco or will we face Detroit? Leave that in the comments section below for you guys' uh, little pick. And uh, thank you guys, of course, for staying patient with me. I know it's been a little bit crazy, but school's finally out until at least mid-January for me, and I can finally start getting back to these uploads. So thank you guys for being patient with me. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're a first-time viewer myself, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Hit me up on Twitter. I will be there. Uh, Tweet me about some certain stuff that you guys have some thoughts on or whatnot. But until next time, my name is Sim with Vengeance, and I'm out. Peace.